Yo, 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 what is going on, Team Tweedy? Welcome to episode 23 of Hashtag Ask Tweedy, the football show where you guys send in your questions, I answer them, try and give you guys as much value as possible. So, this one, usually, most of the time, it's about sending in your questions that are related to football. This one, we have one question about vlogging, which I've decided to chuck in there. Usually, most of the time, it's anything related to football. If you're injured and you want to know how to deal with it, things like that, things, how do you deal with playing against better players, we have questions like that in the future. Again, if you want to ask your questions, leave them in the comments below. Send them to me on Instagram, send them to me on Snapchat, whatever it may be. If you send them to me on Instagram or Snapchat, please let me know whether you want your name to be called out or not, because on YouTube, everyone can see it, so I'm just going to call your name out anyway. So, starting off. The first one comes from Jamal. He says, how do, how do you analyze matches if they aren't being recorded? Now, I get this question a little bit uh, from a few different people. I thought it was something I'd like to address. You need your match recorded. Full stop. End of story. Not only for match analysis, but also for highlights videos. If you're not recording your matches, you're missing out on a lot. A lot of opportunity to learn and also a lot of opportunity to progress in the football world because my highlights video has gotten me trials at different clubs because of the standard of it. It's well filmed, uh, it's well edited and obviously it has some good plays in it. So sometimes I see people film something and it's off their phone just like this and they're on the sideline and they're just going like this, it's all wonky. If you watch my highlights video, link will be up there or there, I forget always. Um, click that and you'll see the standard that you really need to be at. And I think my highlights video is one of the better ones out there because my dad filmed it from a grandstand. Every time we got to a game, he would find a grandstand, find the highest point that he possibly could, the best place to video, and he would go to that spot. He would, he would film, he loved it, so I was very lucky. He would film every single match of mine and I think, you know, if your games aren't being filmed, you need to find, like, someone to do it for you. You need to find a way. And then I also get the question of what camera do you use? Like, how do I do it? Um, I think at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. The iPhone is becoming almost very, like, up to par with the camera quality of some of my, like, my camera here. Uh, the reason I don't use this camera and I don't use my iPhone is because my dad has one from like it's maybe a six-year-old camera maybe even more but the thing about that camera is it can record for 45 minutes straight so he can sit there he never has to stop the recording or start it again it just records 45 minutes straight and then it's done so that would be the only factor most of the cameras these days are very good quality make sure you have a tripod like this one this one was like ten dollars I think not even you can get some really cheap tripods, sort it out, make sure that, like, keep it steady, <laughs> make sure it's decent quality, don't, like, just do that. And then also, I'm going to say on the highlights video, I want to add this bit in, don't just, like, I've, people have sent me highlights video and said, Sean, can you check this out, which is cool, I, I don't know what you really want me to do, because the highlights video is supposed to be your best plays, and some of you guys send your highlights video, and I have no idea who you are. So, again, watch my highlights video, I always circle myself, you can see where I am, I section it out into different bits, like, you can just see how it flows, so that's what I would say about that. Analyzing games, if you can't, if they're not recorded, you just can't. The, the power of seeing something on video and being able to analyze it and think, oh, there was a bit of space right there that I could have gone into next, next week in the match, if I'm ever faced with that same situation where the centre back's dri uh, driving the ball, I know that there's going to be a lot of space behind me, so I need to check my shoulder and see for that. But in a match, it's so difficult to do that in real time. You, you lose the ball and you go, why did I lose the ball? Oh, I didn't skill him fast enough. But a lot of times it comes down to your positioning. You didn't position yourself further away from the player. So real time, you can barely analyse your match. It's too difficult. That's question number one. Question number two, uh, we're gonna go with this one. What information or advice has had the most impact, most positive impact on your career? That one came from Chicky Black on YouTube. 
I'd have to say this would be from my mentor. Uh, it's a string of things. So overall, the best bit of information or advice is to find the benefits in every situation. And I think that has just changed the way I think massively. I'll, if I broke these headphones, I would be like annoyed but I know it's not the end of the world because I'd be able to find the benefits in them. It means that they're no longer half broken. It means I can get a new pair. There's just so many different benefits and in the beginning, you would really have to write them down and I know how powerful writing the benefits are. If, let's say, uh, what are some benefits? What are things, like for my injury, I wrote a hundred benefits of being injured and then it completely shifted my mindset. I was no longer like, why am I injured? I was more, what can I do in this time? How can I improve myself? So I did a coaching course. I got my coaching license. I uh, did a lot of game analysis. I worked a lot with my mentor on my mind and I really used that time rather than just going, well, can't do anything. So, and it can be done with anything. Moving away from home, if I really wanted to, I could write the benefits and I would see, okay, I, I want to move away from home. It, it can be very, very powerful. Uh, so that's the best piece of advice and information that's ever been given to me. I apply that to every single day. Uh, it's, it's just amazing the things that it's done. And then on top of that, the other thing I did it for was my mentor saw that he thought that I was becoming bigger than the team. So he saw that I was an individual player and all I really cared about was myself. And this was back when I was 17 maybe. Maybe a little bit older, I can't quite remember. But, no, maybe, no, 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 maybe like 18 or so. And I wrote 1,000 benefits of being part of a team. And you tried writing 1,000 benefits, that's gonna take you a while. The OG team tweet, you guys know uh, that I've done this, but man, it took months. And I think it's the most powerful thing because then all I care about now, not all I care about, but a massive portion of my mind is filled up. Okay, what can I do for the team? If I'm on the bench, I'm not gonna sit there like this and go, I'm like, all right, what can I do? Can I get waters for the team? Uh, do I wanna get a jacket? Do I need, should I go to the change room and get the jackets for the other guys so that we can stay warm? Um, do I need to warm up the goalkeeper? These are all things that I can do on the bench. If I'm in the stands, what can I do for the coach? Should I, does he want me to video the game? Does he want me to report some things to him? There's all these different things and that's also finding the benefits of those uh, different situations because of course I want to be starting but you need to think about the team. If there's a player better than you or if you're playing against a team where if you're a right winger and you like to play really wide but against this team we want to play narrow so the coach picks the guy that needs to play narrow, you need to look at that and go, okay, that's completely understandable. So that's my biggest piece of advice. Find the benefits in any situation, literally anything. It could be, like if my dog passed away, I would find the benefits. And I know that's deep, but it reduces the, is it dwelling? Yeah, reduces the time that you dwell on it because I could sit there and go, oh my God, I miss my dog. I miss my dog, I miss my dog. But if I go benefits, all right, what are they? No longer have to feed him, no longer have to take him out. Um, and then just slowly build that up in my mind, then I can get back to what I really want to do. And I know that's a bit deep, but at the end of the day, if you have a goal, you don't want to be caught up in things and it just helps free your mind. And it's not like I write the benefits and I go, oh, I'm happy my dog passed away. It's that I've come to terms with it and it's, it's part of my life now and I'm not like, oh, just depressed. I, it's about finding the benefits. That's my biggest advice. Last question. This one's a bit of a long one, but it says, do people look at you oddly when you're walking around talking to camera in your face or when you set up a camera, back up and cross the camera, only get to go back and grab the camera? I did that in an episode not so long ago where I walked, uh, I walked past the camera, changed the camera around, walked all the way, maybe like 150 meters and then walked all the way back. Um, I'd say, it's very awkward in the beginning and I still find it a bit awkward, especially in England where people understand what I say. In Spain, it was much, much easier because I could say whatever I wanted and nobody understood me. So I could be talking about how I need to be focusing at training and giving 100% and they're not gonna understand a single word. But if I say that down the street, the people know what I'm saying and they're like, it. I don't know, it just makes it different, but at the end of the day, what I want to change this uh, question and answer to is 
at the end of the day, I don't care what people think, and I think that's a big asset for me, and it, vlogging has helped it. I, I do not care, but at the same time, I care what other people think, so I know that that's hard to think, but let's say one of you guys comment and say your videos suck. At one time, at the, well, my first instinct is I don't care what you think, because like that's your opinion. My opinion is my videos are good, and and I have a lot of other people saying that they're good as well. But on top of that, at the same time, I care about that because I want to make sure that my videos don't suck. But it's it's a difficult thing to say, not say. It's a difficult thing to understand because how can I say this? I I don't care, but I care. If that makes any sense, I'm hoping I'm hoping you understand that, and that can be applied to anything. Uh, but I think the biggest thing is, like, in football, if you're trying things at training or what else can you do where people... Like, if you're being judged at school for trying something, if you want to leave your family to go and trial overseas, you have to not care what anybody says or thinks about you because at the end of the day, how I always look at it is, is you have one life. And in that one life, you don't get a second chance. If you don't do what you want to do and you get stuck, then that's like your opportunity gone. So you got one life and what does it matter? Like if, if I'm walking down the street and someone looks at me funny for vlogging, what do I care? I'm never going to see that person again in my life. So that's my opinion. One life, don't care what other people think, but at the same time, understand and try to dissect what they think and whether it really matters. So actually I won't use the video, the, uh, the comment of someone saying my video suck, I use the comment of saying why do you wear Beats headphones, they suck um, why don't you use another pair of Sony and I, I don't care what your opinion because I like these Beat headphones but at the same time I might think okay what are Sony headphones like but it's, it's difficult, let me know if you guys understand that concept in the comments below um, caring and not ca no, not caring, but also caring a little bit. Anyway, ten tweet. I'm signing out. Make sure you leave a like on this video, subscribe if you're new out here, join the hashtag AskTweetFamily, and I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Bye. Listen, listen.